Hi guys, welcome to this prestige solo nightfall run of this week's uh, nightfall, which is Tree of Probabilities. I'm running on running on Oxinge, so I'm using Striker subclass. Uh, top uh, top tree for double pulse grenades. That's really all I'm worried about. Obviously, rally barricade for the the fast DPS on on the boss. I'm running better devils, an arc mananan, arc curtain call, and the rampant line or the line rampant sorry for getting through the infinite forest which always really irritates me i really really do not like the infinite forest anybody who's watched the videos knows how much i don't like it nearly everything if not everything i'm using baba obviously the the lion rampant is masterwork uh the curtain call isn't masterwork this isn't a masterwork curtain call so the modifiers on the five of swords are extinguish uh momentum heavyweight and arc singe and as you'll see here in the video and it actually will explain why i went into my inventory and hovered back on it because i couldn't believe it myself i forgot to change the modifier so i actually ran this on time 17 damage which it did actually make a difference it did because i i, I was wondering why i didn't do so much damage on the boss at the start and this probably explains it so lesson learned make sure you check your damage type on your card so this is quite strange this run uh because of the time 17 i was getting hit pretty hard but it never because because the strategy solid it didn't really didn't really affect me too much uh anybody that's seen me do this a run of this before you probably will come to know the strategies i take out the first scorpio tank uh turret on the right Make my way over here, take out the two Scorpio turrets from up here, and then I try and get a rocket on on the the major we're calling these now, I think. Uh try and get a rocket on the major. The key to opening the door, and I've tested it a few times, it just seems to be that that's what it is. If you take out the two phalanx, the two shielded cabal, and then you take out the two cabal that are actually with the shielded centurion. That opens the door. So from from what I've worked out, I did take these ads out here. Uh, I didn't have to. Maybe it's all the ads that drop out the ship, but I didn't have to. So all I have to do now, I've took out the two the two phalanx. All I have to do now is take out any the the, the I think there's one more cabal up here that was with him. Uh, I could be wrong. No, nope, he's there. Uh, take him out, and the door should open. Simple, simple as. Now the infinite forest is the infinite forest. It will, it will be random every time. The line rampant helps you get through this, no problem at all. Momentum. The only reason I've got it on because I don't really like using momentum, but the only reason I've got it on is for the infinite forest, and it really did help. It really did help. When you get to the end of the infinite forest, it will always be the same. You'll always have those ads appearing on the center. If you're fast enough and can get up there and you're confident in your abilities, you can just get up and take them all with your super if you have it. I didn't have it at this time so because I didn't kill enough enemies. So I just jump up on the left. There's a platform up on the left and I take all the ads out from there. Take the four snipers out first and then you can pick off the cabal at will. Now, the reason I thought this was quite strange is because at 6 o'clock, like I always do on a Tuesday, I come on to get my first run of the Prestige done. And I'd done a Prestige in a pretty good time. It was about 11 minutes. This the, the, this Prestige is about 14 and a half minutes. Uh, and, and the Times 17 modifier explains why ads weren't going down so fast. But imagine my surprise that when I came on, I was still on and, I, you know, I'd done the run. I went, went down, got a glass of juice come back up some of my clan members were on so i said hey you just want to do a nightfall let's do a normal and we went on and it was the tree of probabilities because the nightfall that actually was there at six o'clock was a garden world so i actually have a prestige run of a garden world 11 minutes pretty good run we'll see how we'll see how things go this week i might just post it just 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 for the you know the strangeness of it and I actually knew it was going to be a tree of probabilities this time because last time the DFA wasn't dropping and they fixed the problem and they promised they gave, gave us a date where the DFA would be dropping again and it was today. So now the DFA is dropping. Using this strategy without the time 17 damage multiplier, you'll probably get past this another two or three minutes faster. If you do it with a team, 
I'll explain the difference between the solo run and the team run when we get to the end. Because there is a different way to run it with a team. But it's kind of the same, I'll just explain the positioning. But, uh, yeah, so, it's, sure probabilities. I quite enjoy it. I enjoy it because when it was first a nightfall, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. A lot. A lot of. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna really call myself a YouTuber, but a lot of guys that do this type of thing, they don't really say stuff like I had a real problem with this or, you know, I struggled. When this was first a nightfall, I did. I didn't like this. I really didn't like this strike, and it took me longer than most other nightfalls for me to find my stride on this one. Some of them, like last week's, I find my stride pretty quickly. Uh, but it took took me a while to find my stride in this one. And then when I did, it, it, it basically became, how fast can I do this part? How fast can I do that part? I'm quite I'm quite strategic. That's why I don't use stuff like, you know, I'm, I'm not one of these type of people that jumps about. And, you know, uh, people like Easel, who is a very good player, awesome player. I'm not detracting from anything by saying that. It's just he seems to jump about quite a lot and... I mean, he's got brilliant control of his character, and you know, and it, yes, I know it's PC, it's a different thing, kind of, but it's it's he, he used to play on PlayStation. His runs weren't quite as smooth, but he still made the runs. So, you know, he he seems to keep control of his character and jump about. I don't really play like that. I'm more of a the strategy is and the repeatability of something. And I think if you jump about quite a lot, you don't get that repeatability. It's a lot of it's chance. And RNG, which I don't really understand how that can be, but we'll, we'll get into that another time. So when you come through the portal, you're on your Titan, you've got your line rampants, you can just jump right across here. Forget about those ads, and as soon as you land, just get on your spiral. You know, the, the two snipers that spawn on the left, normally I kill those. But all the, the kind of, this was like my third run, I tried it with an Ikelos, the Ikelos shotgun. Because I know people are doing runs like that on PC. And I think a couple of guys have done it on on console. It, it, it just is... It's, the repeatability isn't there for me. It's the same as the Paramedium. If you watch the guys that done the melts on the Paramedium, look at the clocks. They must have been there for a while because their runs are like 27, 30 minutes long. The run doesn't take more than 20 minutes. So they've tried it quite a few times and died and eventually got it. So... Those sorts of runs, there's no repeatability for me. You know, that's why you only get to see the end of the run when they finally do it. So, <clears throat> now, that we're, now that we've got that, got that out the way, this is the real sec. this is the section now where you are actually going to have to kill some ads. So what I do is I take those two cabal from down here where I'm safe, and by the time I jump up, I've got my health back. Now, these are the ones you've really got to worry about. The, the, the incenders, the, these shielded flamethrower dudes they are not so bad because and i don't know if it's because because it's on arc but the solar didn't really melt me as much as i remember it melt me and now as i say knowing that i was playing on a time 17 modifier i would have expected quite a bit more now i was quite surprised but now it doesn't seem so surprising that that rocket never killed both of them but you know, maybe, maybe, we'll just say maybe, maybe the times modifier had something to do with it. So, I only used that rocket there because I had, I knew I had that one back there. And you, you, ca you need to have your six rockets and your two grenades when you get to the boss. On the Titan, I've never really, I've never been able to do the one phase on them. But normally... It's a couple of seconds slower. This run is probably slower because I was taking a, a bit of heat in the second room, so I decided to kill everything before the, the, the Minotaur. If you're with a team, I'll explain the strategy for a team as, when we're there. Because with a team, you'll do you'll do the melt. You'll, you'll melt them in one phase. Easy peasy. So, yeah, just keep your distance as much as, as, much as you can. As you can see there... Uh, if they encroach on you, it can be really, it can be really dangerous because that shotgun, that arc shotgun, can really do some damage to you. Uh, so just make sure you're you're being careful, and you're keeping yourself kind of safe. 
don't go using tons of rockets and grenades because we're almost at the boss. You really don't want to be out here for any great length of time waiting for supers and trying to farm heavy or find heavy. So just be keep yourself safe. Put a bit of distance between yourself and the ads, especially the normal kind of just the normal cabal. You want to keep a bit of distance with them because those shotguns are really, 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 really hard hitting, especially on Oxinge. So remember any shielded enemies that aren't majors, the orange bars, any shielded ads, you don't need to match that element. A any kind of weapon with explosive projectile takes their health down inside their shield. So the better devils is actually the best thing to use for these kind of shielded guys. But because I was just using my, my mananum because it does the same thing. I, and actually, I run out of mananum energy energy ammo which wasn't good it wasn't expected so now i can tell you guys keep an eye on your your ammunition <laughs> uh, and don't run out because then you've got to encroach on exactly the place i just told you not to encroach on so i think i i think i realize i've got some up here and 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 again there is that thing i forget what the actual perk was called and i'm surprised i forget because it was such an annoying perk where using that damage using that weapon drops less of that ammo it seems to be intrinsic i'm not sure if it still is but it, it, it does seem to be quite a bit for me because i was dropping quite a bit of primary not much energy but i was using my energy weapon so you can test that for yourself if you want energy wet energy ammo start using your primary and see what drops it's, it's not guaranteed to drop all the time but you just might drop more from not using that weapon type so i've got full a full ammunition uh, I've pushed those guys, and because, again, I think it was the damage type, I'm now... The damage type lowers your light level in the eyes of that strike. So, because I put time 17, it took 17 levels off my character. That's maybe why I was doing less damage than I expected. So, when I was pushing ads like that, the, the recommended amount of shots that I, you know, that I know should put them down wasn't putting them down. So, now that we're here, that pillar... On the right hand, so there's two pillars at the back. There's this one on the right. This is the pillar we're going to get on. This pillar, if we're on here at the back left hand corner of that, the boss can't hit you. So you can put a rally barricade up and you can go at him. If you're in here with a team, you can get the other two members of your fire team. If one of them's a Titan, if one of them's a Warlock, it's all good. Make sure that they're behind him over at the back and they, they can spam them as well and as you've seen exactly how many rock i got all my six off i hit them with all six so because i hit them with all six you know you can see how much damage it would do if three people done that but don't get tons of people up on that up on the don't get tons of people up on that uh block at the back because there is a real chance you'll kill each other you know i've seen it done it's happened with five teams i've been in Split up, get one guy to go up there with a rally. He'll be the closest. Hopefully the boss will look at him and the guys at the back, maybe in a warlock rift with Luna factions or behind another uh, rally barricade, melt him from there. Again, if you're doing it as a team, uh, you won't have to deal with any of these ads. You really won't because you can just go straight up and melt the, melt the, the Minotaur. Because if you've melted the boss... It's a pretty good bet that one of one of yous are gonna still have some heavy, and if you've still got some heavy, it's it's really with no damage modifier, it's quite quite a quite a low amount of uh, rockets you need to fire, maybe one. But as you can see, I mean, normally I'm used to absolutely melting him with this, and it just never worked. And it was really confusing me. I, I actually thought I was going to fail it because I wasn't doing enough damage. I tried everything. I, I was, you know, I was wondering. Well, I never tried. I thought of everything. Is there, you know, I've, am I getting a slow connection? Thought of everything, and then afterwards, you can imagine my surprise when I realised I was still on time seventeen. So, yep, yeah, I'm just going to clear these just for the sake of it. So that you know, I wasn't really paying too much attention to the time because. You guys know I'm not a speedrunner. I do things efficiently. I like to do things safely. I'm not saying speedrunners don't do things efficiently. It's just a different set of principles. 
my principles are teaching you guys or showing people that are interested how to do this night ball very easily. And I think this is a very easy run. I think this makes it look pretty easy as well. So be mindful of the lasers. Where you see me fighting from is the, the ideal positions. Use the pillars to your advantage to block the ads. And, and, and you know, just keep an eye on, on the video. You'll see here there is a little space on this right-hand side where you're laser free but you're you can you can get cover from both sides so that's all the ads down here all we have to do now we have a rally barricade i've got three rockets we're just going to jump up we're going to put up a rally barricade and we're going to kill the boss very simple make sure uh wait wait till he's coming at you in a straight line but try and get those rockets off sharpish because even if you're backed against the wall his attack will blow you away from from your rally barricade as you can see three rockets and he's dead and hopefully you guys will drop the dfa the death from above hand cannon which is the nightfall specific drop i have been uh live model you have been a great audience and i hope you enjoyed the video if you do give it a like and i will see you guys in the next video